You're tuned in to KEXP, listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle. You can find us streaming online around the world at kexp.org. And right now, I'm down here in the KEXP studios with Bully, and we're streaming this session live on KEXP's Facebook page. So watch along the video of Bully live on KEXP. Welcome. It's so wonderful to have you here. Thanks for having us. You look fantastic in this new studio, and I am so in love with the new album. I can't wait to hear these songs live. Thanks. Want to start us off with one from the new record, Losing? Yeah, for sure. It's Bully, live on KEXP. I stood up last night, I was tearing up the bed. Thought of the death was overwhelming. I could have talked, but I just rolled over on stage. Live in the KEXP studios, it's Bully, sounding fantastic, playing songs from the new record, Losing. It came out in October on Seattle's own Sub Pop Records, and uh, you sound great today. Thank you again so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having us. The new studio is beautiful. <laughs> we absolutely love it. it looks We've been, great. been here just over two years, but still just such a joy to come in every day. I pinch myself that we have this great place to showcase fantastic yeah. bands like you. Um, it's been about three years, a little less, since we last had you in studio. You were just touring like nuts on Feels Like. And yeah. I'm wondering, did you just get to a point where you're like, uh, we got to just start working on a new record <laughs> now. We could keep playing forever if we let ourselves. Yeah, I think that since I was the first record, it was really a learning process of... Um, touring, balancing touring and writing. Um, and for us, we were just going nonstop and realized that, yeah, it could just keep going unless we kind of pulled the plug for a little bit. Um, and towards the end of it, we were just ready to start playing new material and get working on the second record. So, Touring on a first record, I can just only imagine all the things you must learn. And is there anything you can sort of uh, think of that floats to the top that you learn from playing so much live, having that nightly interaction with a live audience that you've taken into your either songwriting or recording or just how you manage and being in a band? Yeah, um, I would say off the bat, just kind of learning to roll with the punches and picking your battles because so much changes so frequently and a lot is out of your control, I feel like. And you just kind of have to chill out and move on. Um, that's a big one. So, yeah, that and just trying to, I guess, play the best that you can every night. And um, if something happens, just move on because you still have like three weeks of tour left and it's not worth getting stressed out about. 
and you really only have what's in front of you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to do, but it's such a good lesson to continue to try to do that in every aspect of your life. Yeah. I work on it myself. Um, I absolutely love this new record. Were you excited to get writing these songs? Um, you know, what, what, what's this record about for you? What was your headspace when you started writing Losing? Um, it, there's kind of a lot of different things going on um, in my life at the time. Each song is about something a little bit different, but uh, I was very ready to start writing for it. I had been writing for it for a while, and I think six months before we stopped um, playing, we had like a bunch of songs that we had demoed, and only a few of them made their way onto the record. But I'm, I'm constantly eager to um, get out new stuff, and I just have to like be better about waiting because I feel like... I always favor the newest material because I'm not sick of it yet. So when I'm working on new stuff, I'm like, oh, I just want to play this now, but it's not really the way it works. Um, you sound great uh, playing together with the band. You want to introduce everyone here? Yeah, I would love to. So this is Clayton Parker on guitar and backup vocals, um, Reese Lazarus on bass, and Wesley Mitchell on drums. I am intrigued by your recording process, and I know we probably have a lot of musicians out there listening that are familiar with the different ways that you can record, but I know there are probably more people that aren't, and you ha got your Bachelor of Science in audio recording, so you mm -hmm. clearly know all the different ways you can record and all the bells and whistles of digital recording, but you have made a choice to record straight to tape, and there's a lot of challenges um, involved in doing it that way, and I wonder if you can talk a little bit about those challenges and why they appeal to you. Yeah, I would love to. Um, or maybe the challenges don't appeal to you, but the, <laughs> the process and the end result. I, when I was going through school, we primarily learned digital um, tracking and it was just frustrating to me when the answer was to just restart the computer. And once I kind of started digging into analog recording, it just seemed like a more of a phys physical process. And Really, we do it because it just clicks better with me, and I've engineered the past two records, so that's just my preferred method. Um, but I like it. I'm a very indecisive person, and it forces me to commit and move on, and I think it's an accurate representation of the way we were playing and sounded in, in that time that we're tracking, and, and that's nice, too. It's just like a little memory and not something that we know we were endlessly tweaking on a computer for a year and a half after the fact. Um, so I really like that about it and um, being limited by tracks. I mean, you can link up tape machines and have as many as you want, but we just do 24 tracks. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a, a fun challenge. Um, I'm not against digital recording or anything. I'll record our demos and stuff in Pro Tools, but if we have the time and budget and space, that's how we've preferred to do it for the past two records. You mentioned time and budget. Is it time consuming and expensive more so than digital recording? I would say so in, in the sense of we're actually having to play everything and there's not a lot of heavy editing, whereas if you do stuff digitally, you can just move parts over that were correct instead of going back in there and being forced to play it right. Um, but it, it really just depends um, on how you choose your spend, choose to spend your time. When, when we're in there, I'm up at 9 a.m. and working till 11 and then getting up and doing it again. I think in the two and a half months we were there, I know that I didn't go out once. I was just in the studio all the time. But I think a lot of that has to do with us just needing to make the most of our budget and being in the studio is expensive in general anywhere. So... Um, yeah, yeah. So when you want to redo a song, if you listen back to it, do you have to redo the whole thing? And how many times roughly will you play a song? Yeah, so we'll usually at least, we'll, we'll all go down there and we'll track it live. And then we pretty much try and keep as, as much as we can with at least bass and drums. So that's the minimum of what we need to keep from that take. And then if Clay and I need to go and overdub our guitar parts, we can do that. And there's punch in and punch outs and stuff. So if it's like a time where you have space, you can you can go ahead and do that. Um, but for the most part, we always try and keep bass and drums. And then if we happen to nail our guitar parts, we'll keep that too. Um, but it really just depends on the song. Sometimes it's seven takes and we feel really good about it. Sometimes we're 
unsure of the tempo and we'll do two different versions of it, usually two different versions of um, that and mixes at most because tape is really expensive. So that's another thing um, that's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess you can see it both ways, but uh, just that we don't have multiple mixes of everything really. We'll have two or three at most and then it's like, which one sounds better? All right, that's it. Let's send it to the half inch and just move on. And I've heard you talk about liking to leave those sort of quote mistakes in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. so. I love little natural mishaps that are left in recordings. I think it gives it character. So it depends what it is. I mean, if it's just like a wrong part that somebody played, we'll redo it. But if sometimes if there's weird breaths or um, guitar feedbacks that have occurred and only happened during that take, I prefer to keep it. I think it's cool. I appreciate you going into detail on that. I, I find it very interesting. Thank you, yeah. We're live here in the KEXP studios with Bully. We're streaming live video of this right now on KEXP's Facebook page. You can see this band playing tonight at Numo's and a fantastic new record called Losing. Want to play a couple more tracks? Yeah, we'd love to.
Rioli live on KEXP, sounding great and playing songs from their new album, Losing, came out in October on Sub Pop Records. Tonight they play at Numo's here in Seattle. Alicia, I know that you grew up in Minneapolis or in Minnesota, actually just outside of St. Paul, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, but uh, you went to school in Tennessee and you've been living in Nashville for a while. And I feel like as a fan of music, there is a great indie rock scene in Nashville. I actually first discovered you before your first album came out opening for Jeff the Brotherhood at the Crocodile Oh yeah, many yeah. years ago. And I had never heard of you and I was like, oh my gosh, who is this? And <laughs> Um, do you love living in Nashville and do you feel a part of a vibrant music scene there? Um, I do love it. I think it's a really practical place to um, live if you're trying to be a musician for a living. <laughs> uh, but for reasons like I can have a house and we can play in it and keep the van and the trailer there and it's still somewhat affordable rent. Or you can always find whatever gear you're looking for there. Um, and also that everybody's kind of trying to do a similar thing. So there's a big support system that goes on there and not much competition. And so it's just really nice to have that. I think we wouldn't be able to um, be doing what we're doing now if it, if it wasn't for that support system. You mentioned that you engineer your own records. Obviously you have the skill to do that and the education. Do you record other people's music or are people asking you to do their albums for them? Um, I really just record friend stuff for now. Um, for the past four years, we've pretty much just been touring and focusing on bully stuff, so I haven't taken on any other big projects. But yeah, sometimes just friend stuff here and there. Um, otherwise, I just like to do my own thing, <laughs> track our own stuff. I know that you, we talked about um, the making of your two records. We didn't mention that you went to Chicago and worked at Electoral Audio where you were an intern, a very uh, legendary recording space. Do you ever think about uh, making a studio of your own? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just really expensive. I'm, but I am slowly building up. I mean, if I, uh, I slowly save up and I'll get microphones at a time and stuff like that. So I'm looking for a tape machine right now, but... I think, uh, yeah, I am. I hope that's the goal. So. How, how was your experience this time at Electrical Audio after interning there, then making your first record there, and now a few years later making another record there? You obviously must feel very comfortable there. Yeah, that's a big reason why we do it is because it's really comfortable, and I think what we're doing is um, recording a record is just a pretty intense process and the last thing you want to worry about is whether or not you're comfortable in the place you're doing it and comfortable with who you're working with. So um, it's really easy for us to go there and track and, and know what to expect and feel good um, in our time being there. And you can sleep there and stuff. You, you can just stay there. And there's a kitchen. <laughs> it's like, it's perfect. We just get groceries and then Sometimes you don't see uh, daylight for four days. <laughs> <laughs> be a good and bad thing. Yep. <laughs> what well, was a good thing as far as this new album is concerned? Losing a new record from Bully, and we're going to talk them into playing one more song before they go. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for having us. <laughs>
one. Bully Live on KEXP, songs from the new album, Losing. Lisa, you mentioned that you like to play new stuff. Are these new songs for you now, or you've been living with these a long time? Uh, we've been living with these for a long time. Are you working, or have you been working on new music? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Exciting. I got two new ones I want to demo when we get home. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. It's always so great to see you. Thanks for having us. Always a pleasure. Please come back anytime. Fun. It's Bully live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.